as far as the references available in ayurveda the care of the newborn can be divided in two ways one is care immediately after birth to a normal baby and also care which is given to a sick baby so today we will going to discuss about the care which is offered by ayurveda to a sick baby and that topic will be discussed under the heading of prana pratyagamana because sick babies or those babies who do not cry immediately after birth or those babies who do not show any movement immediately after the birth they has to be resuscitated and today we will going to see some of the important aspects regarding resuscitation or neonatal resuscitation as explained in ayurveda now the first question is does resuscitation is explained in ayurveda or not yes resuscitation is explained in ayurveda under the heading of prana pratyagamana the details we will see further and we know that resuscitation is a very important procedure to save the life of the baby now we have present today modern technical advancement which is able to save even the baby up to 26th week of gestation and that has to be considered as one of the greatest contribution to the world and uh, of course this leads to high special care neonatal units also which is saving the life of many asphyxiated babies however the quality of those babies after saving such babies is questionable but at least one thing is quite sure that we are able to save a baby even with very low birth weight and even very premature and even at 26th week of gestation that is because of highly advanced modern technical advancement now principles behind each this technology and advancement need to be understood okay so what are the principles which is followed in the contemporary science under the heading of resuscitation and what are all the principles that is considered in ayurveda under the heading of prana pratyagamana so this needs to be understood and then we will come to uh, a very good conclusion about this uh, two topics now does resuscitation is explained in ayurveda we continue when you look into the classics you may be surprised to know that many of the present day advancement which is explained in the modern science are inspired by the ayurveda principles because these principles were explained about 5000 years back and when we thoroughly analysis analysis thorough analysis of these particular principles which are explained in ayurveda and we come to know that somehow this may be a inspiration for the present day advancement in the neonatal care ayurveda explains the methods of resuscitation with the same principles about 5000 years back but compared to the present day scenario the ayurvedic ayurveda way of resuscitation may looks little crude method for the present day scenario because today we will have more advanced techniques of newborn care and in comparison to that advanced technical care the ayurvedic explanations which are given in charaka shushruta and kashapa etc they it may looks little outdated or may be a crude method but principles are same what we have to observe is the principles are same it is just like you can drink a coffee in a roadside box shop also for 5 rupees and same coffee you may also take in a five star hotel for 500 rupees the reason is both are coffees okay so taste may be also same it's only one is a roadside street box shop and another one is a five star hotel so similarly what we have to consider more is principles behind this uh, advancement okay so that we will go into see what is approach of newborn care in ayurveda now newborn care is explained in ayurveda and considered under two important headings as i have told in the beginning one is routine care of the child okay so this is explained by shushruta in 10th chapter sharirasthana ata jatol ba jatol paniya adhyaya where he where jata ulbo ulbo paniya adhyaya that means the cleaning of the ulbas is mentioned by shushruta okay it's not a name of the adhyaya in that particular shloka is mentioned in this chapter shushruta sharira 10th chapter 
cleaning of the ulba is mentioned okay then he also mentioned about navajata shishu chardana that means uh, uh, chardana means refers to making the baby omitting forcefully and ataha kalu jata metra viva balam ulba sainda vasarpisham marjit that means that you have to clean the ulba ulba is nothing but the amniotic fluid and as well as navajata shishu chardana that is whatever the amniotic fluid which is present in the uh, upper respiratory tract that is in the trachea mouth and nose etc that will be clean and after that amniotic fluid which is taken inside the stomach aspirated into the stomach stomach so that has to be forcefully removed and ayurveda says it has to be done by means of chardan saindava and sarpisha the <coughs> salt and as well as grita is given for this chardana purpose nowadays we perform the same procedure under the heading of stomach wash okay in the stomach wash also most commonly we use nacl solution and ayurveda also says saindava okay so next it comes in the routine care is nabhi nala kartana that is also mentioned and a detailed method of nabhi nala kartana and a proper method of nabhi nala kartana the distance from where you have to cut uh, and again if there is any infection and all what you have to do everything detail has been given in ayurveda then other routine care which is explained like snana is mentioned parishaka is mentioned and maintaining the temperature different methods of maintaining the temperature that has been explained so this actually comes under routine care of the child navadasha navajata shishu paricharya routine care okay cleaning the oral cavity or cleaning the vulva then uh, stomach wash or navajata shishu chardana then nabhi nala kartana then comes to cleaning the baby like snana then parisheka maintain different methods of temperature then going for breast feeding maintaining the aseptic measure under the heading of uh, raksha karma so these are all the routine care of the child which is explained in ayurveda today we will not discuss about this today we will discuss another what is the approach of newborn care in ayurveda again so second approach is first is routine care second approach is as i told when the baby is sick baby is not breathing and baby has got some problem baby is not showing any spontaneous movements and all those things so in that time also what care has to be taken that is also mentioned in ayurveda and that is called as emergency care of the newborn or child in an emergency care of the e care so this has been mentioned by charaka very clearly tataha sanklesha vihitan pranan punarlabitah that means a child who is not breathing child is not showing any signs of life okay any symptoms of the life then you have to give the emergency care to that child till the baby start breathing okay pranan punarlabitah okay so this includes the cleaning of the oral cavity then positioning of the child then different steps of prana pratyagamana comes under this particular emergency care of the child so a detailed explanation has been given like ashmano sangatanam karana yor mulo shito dagena ushno dagena muke parisheka ha tataha sanklesha vitan pranan pranala vivata so this procedure has to be done till the baby get revived properly okay so this care is called as emergency care of the child and this emergency care of the child as explained in ayurveda so that explains the process of prana pratyagamana or resuscitation the modern science also do the resuscitation when the child is not breathing or apgar score is low then only we will start with or heart rate is low respiratory rate is low then only we will start with the resuscitation ayurveda also says the almost all same thing okay now one of the important question is why prana pratyagamana and resuscitation are one and same okay so we are repeatedly telling that modern science uh, contemporary science explains uh, resuscitation of newborn ayurveda explains prana pratyagamana now question is why they are one and same if you go with the meaning the what is the meaning of resuscitation resuscitation means it is apparently lifting up the baby from a death like condition this is a dictionary meaning of resuscitation okay so apparently lifting the baby from a death like condition and that is called as resuscitation what is prana pratyagamana prana prati agamana that means the prana that is the life which is once gone out of the body okay so that will be again re established inside the body prana prati agamana therefore the meaning of resuscitation and meaning of prana pratyagamana are one and same there is no much a difference so the methods are all, almost all same no uh, when we have to go for prana pratyagamana conditions which required the prana pratyagamana so charaka very clearly says what is any condition where the child is acheshta tatra acheshtat okay this is the first word charaka says charaka very clearly says acheshta shishu when the shishu is not showing any chesta okay ashe chesta that is absolutely there is no movement okay baby is absolutely nil that means uh, it is totally ploppy and there is nil baby okay so that is 
achista condition okay achista and nichista are different nichista means he is not able to lift against the gravity which is explained in the fakka yoga okay nichista sat but achista is different achista is totally there is motionless and there is no movements at all so chalaka says such babies immediately after birth if they are showing achista then it is a indication for prana pratyagamana okay so we know that every birth is an emergency every birth is an emergency anything can occur in each and every delivery okay therefore kashyap very clearly says a lady when she is going for delivery one of her leg is in the buloka and another leg is always in yamaloka so this particular version of kashyap clearly indicates the indicates that every birth is an emergency anything can occur anything can occur okay so every birth is an emergency in the last few moments anything can occur mucosal aspiration etc now that's one thing post term babies yes post term babies most of the time they require uh, research reason because they are already mature then their movement is more chance of mucosal aspiration etc is more okay and uh, they are very active also so they themselves cause much problem and again at the post term is their placental insufficiency will start so such conditions really requiring the resuscitation or prana pratyagamana again this is also required in preterm babies and iugr babies that we know that any problem which is related to uterine contractions or abnormal presentation like breech presentation shoulder presentation okay obstructed deliveries and uh, mood agarbha like conditions yes this is required or improper av that means uh, uterine contractions are not proper okay antenatal problems antenatal hemorrhage is there placenta previa is there so these are all the problems again may require res- res- resuscitation or prana pratyagamana similarly high risk pregnancies okay mood agarbha like conditions that i already explained obstruction atulya gotra vivaha why i mean at, what i mean to say is atulya gotra vivaha may lead to some of the congenital problems or hereditary problems and in hereditary problems there may be sometimes there is requirement of resuscitation any other the maternal disorders mother is suffering from epilepsy mother is suffering from thyrotoxicosis mother is suffering from thyroid problem mother is suffering from heart problem bronchial asthma taking medicine for the same okay so all these things may lead to placental insufficiency like conditions and there may be requirement of resuscitation at the time of the birth and drugs and procedure during the pregnancy then congenital problems of the mother like cpd and all then not following the rajaswala rutucharya uh, and uh, rutumati garbhini paricharya etc that may lead to anti so many antenatal problems or garbhopaka garbhopaka atakara bhavas and that may be a also also may be a indication for resuscitation then congenital problems of the baby definitely if the baby is having some other congenital problems like um, esophageal atresia and so many other things and very importantly which is commonly seen in uh, clinical practice that is the mucosal aspiration mucosal aspiration because of fetal distress and these are all some of the common uh, indications of resuscitation immediately after the birth now when to do resuscitation as per ayurveda so according to ayurveda so when you have to do resuscitation or resuscitation or when you have to start resuscitation the word resuscitation can be better uh, ex- exchanged by prana pratyagamana in ayurveda whenever i say resuscitation in ayurveda it suggests a prana pratyagamana okay so charaka mentioned a different procedures for the achesta shishu child immediately after birth when it is not showing the signs and symptoms of the life okay so it's called as achesta shishu and charaka mentions different यद्यत् अचेष्ट सियात् प्राणन प्रत्यागमन प्राणन प्रत्यागमन प्राण प्रत्यागम शुड बी डन टू ए अचेष्ट शिशु यदि व चेष्ट एव सियाीन्स इमीडियटली आफ्टर बर्थ वी हेव टू गो फॉर रिसक्सटेशन न द क्वेश्चन कम्स वाट शुड बी टेकन एस अचेष्ट वेन चरक से अचेष्ट वट इज दिस अचेष्ट शिशु सो अचेष्ट शिशु मीन्स एनी चाइल्ड विच इज नॉट शोइंग सैंस एंड सिमटम्स ऑफ द लाइफ इमीडियटली आफ्टर बर्थ नौ इन द clinical scenario we find certain conditions like primary apnea secondary apnea and terminal apnea okay i will not go in detail about that okay these are some of the conditions where baby is mill at the time of the birth baby is not showing any signs in the birth out of them terminal apnea are more different uh, de- uh, dangerous and also the secondary is are also most dangerous primary is are usually not dangerous if you uh, revive the baby with certain resuscitation procedures it will get get revived quickly then you can take achesta shishu as a low apgar scoring in the present day scenario any baby is with a low apgar scoring okay so that can be taken as achesta so we 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 assess the apgar scoring at 1 minute 3 uh, uh, minute 5 minute 7 minutes etc in 10 minutes okay and we will have a scoring system for that 
and uh, a low apgar system uh, low apgar scoring is also one of the indication for uh, this particular resuscitation so if there is no spontaneous respiration due to any reason maybe mucinum aspiration or some type, even intraventricular hemorrhages there is no spontaneous respiration of the baby immediately after birth that is also a indication for uh, resuscitation and charaka would have been told this condition is also a chesta okay so prana pratyagmana should be done till the newborn become chestava that is very clearly told by charaka yava chesta asya that means a chesta shishu should be given with prana pratyagmana methods and you have to continue it till the child become chesta normal okay so that means again the life symptoms of life will start in the baby like uh, respiration uh, then heart rate etc color etc so so meaning is prana prati agamana lifting the baby from apparently a death like condition or re establishing the prana in the body of the baby <coughs> which is which has once gone out and these are different references which are mentioned in charaka and shushuta etc regarding resuscitation as per ayurveda so we will go into discuss it one by one tatyasu kalu aparayaham pratnarthe karmani kriyamani jatamatrasya kumarasya karyanam eni karmani bhavati tani karmani bhavati tadyatah ashmano sangatanam karanayor mule then shitodakena ushnodakena muke parishekah then tatah sanklesha saklavishtam prananam punarlabate This procedure has to be done pranam punar lopate. Jab tak pran vapas nahi aayega, tab tak kisko karna hai, ठीक है? Other procedures like Krishna ka palika shur pe na che na abhi nishnu yath. Yadyat achesta ha syath. Dhyavat pranam pratyagmanam. Tata pratyagata pranam prakriti bhuto tum abhi samiksha snana udaka adi karmana. That means after re-establishing the prana back in the body, once the baby is get stabilized, later the later procedures routine care of the child has to be performed till then you have to go with the emergency procedures only okay now we'll see uh, just to understand the concept of uh, prana pratyagamana explained in ayurveda we will have a very short discussion on steps of resuscitation as explained in the contemporary sense this helps to understand um, the the greatness of ayurveda and also in the present scenario what we can compare to ayurveda that is easy for the explanation with that purpose i am giving a very short explanation of a, uh, different steps of resuscitation okay so when you receive the baby first thing is always you have to maintain the temperature by different methods okay it may be wrapping the baby or putting on the cool, uh, radiant warmer maintaining the temperature of the room whatever then immediately next step is you have to clean the oral cavity nose and dry the baby and then cut the umbilical cord okay if the baby is not crying by this time then you have to go for some of the sensory stimulation okay so plips <coughs> on the soles and <coughs> you can given soles and palms you can go for the plips and if it is not working go for the spinal rubbing this is also one of the method of a sensory stimulation spinal area you have to rub in the upward direction then if it is not crying baby is now also not crying then observe for the color of the baby and vitals of the baby if it is good it's okay if it is not good then go for free oxygen free oxygen if the heart rate is below 100 suppose if the heart rate is below 100 and child is also looking sinus then go for bag and mask ventilation and give it for 30 second and recheck if the heart rate is getting up coming up then you can slowly stop the bag and mask ventilation and go on free oxygen free flow oxygen and then the baby can be revived suppose if after giving bag and mask ventilation also there is no improvement then heart rate is still falling below 100 it is now 80 something somewhere 80 90 then bag and mask ventilation has to be continued along with the chest compression okay chest compression has to be given now again assess the heart rate and all now if the heart rate is picking up then it's okay slowly stop the chest compression come back to bag and mask ventilation then slowly stop the bag and mask ventilation come back to the free flow oxygen and likewise you can proceed if after giving bag and mask ventilation and chest compression also if the condition of the baby is not improving then it's a indication for uh, some of the drugs okay adrenaline like drugs can be given so now here we have to go for endotracheal intubation okay if the chest compression is also not working along with bag and mask ventilation then go for the endotracheal intubation okay and by putting the endotracheal intubation you have to go for continuous positive pressure ventilation okay and till the baby start the spontaneous breathing in the meantime if the heart rate is now below 60 in that time you can go for some of the drugs vasopressive agents can be given one of the most commonly given drug is adrenaline so this is in a very very short way 
the different steps of resuscitation as explained in the contemporary medical science. Now basic principles when you go for the resuscitation is always TABC, TABC, okay. So that is temperature, airway, breathing and circulation, okay. Now about two decades back, two decades back, uh, the contemporary science is believing only ABC of resuscitation. Nowadays they have included, made it TABC. Okay, temperature is most important. And if you look into the Ayurvedic classics, it is very clear that Ayurveda given important for the temperature since beginning itself. Okay, contemporary science nowadays they are telling that no, it's, it should be TABC, not ABC. Anyway, the improvement is always very good. So basic principles to maintain always TABC. Resuccession major principle and that is TABC. What is T for temperature? First thing is you have to maintain the temperature. So temperature can be maintained by radiant warmer, open care system, or maintaining the nursery temperature, maintaining the labor room temperature, etc. Okay. Then maintain the airway. How to maintain the airway? Airway should be position of the baby. By positioning the baby, you can maintain the airway. Okay. Then cleaning the oral cavity and the nose by mucus sucker and all those things. Okay, so that also helps to maintain the airway. Then cleaning the pharynx and larynx. Third step is establish breathing. Now breathing has to be established. To breathing establish means you have to uh, take the air. Baby has to take the air in, isn't it? When the airway is open, air can go inside, and that may initiate the breathing. So therefore, free flow oxygen can be given. You can establish the breathing by oxygen hood box also. Then most commonly used bag and mask ventilation can be used uh, to establish the breathing when the baby is not breathing. Then endotracheal intubation. But before going for this bag and mask ventilation, first two steps are very important. What is that? Maintain the temperature, then maintain the airway, clean the airway, then go for bag and mask ventilation. Otherwise, you are pushing the li uh, liquids and fluids inside, which further can cause the, cause the blockage. So establish the breathing now after once you are able to establish the breathing then you go for establishment of the circulation circulation has to be maintained by external chest compression okay chest compression helps to uh, uh, increase the cardiac function okay external chest compression or some of the vasopressive agent like adrenaline or dopamine etc and even some other procedures like uh, maintaining the temperature maintaining the aseptic care that also helps in the maintaining the circulation that we will see later so these are the four basic in the previous slide we have seen steps of resuscitation according to contemporary science and the next slide we have seen the basic four principles of resuscitation according to contemporary science now we will see the same principles as explained in ayurveda under the heading of prana pratyekama okay so first they explain maintenance of temperature okay for the temperature maintenance uh, what the present science says is you cover the baby very well then dry the baby then keep the baby under the radiant warmer that means any heat source and also you can keep the baby on incubator okay this is what modern science is contemporary science is now if you look into the ayurvedic science so ayurvedic uh, pranapratyakana concept very clearly says that construction of sutika gara by heat resistant materials if you see according to ayurveda the delivery room is sutika gara in the sutika gara the delivery will take place and they very clearly says that the sutika gara should be constructed by some of the wooden materials etc which are heat resistant materials okay so that's the basic thing that they have given importance for maintenance of temperature okay number two again they say that continuously there should be burning of the medicinal wooden plants karkundu etc different drugs wooden drugs are mentioned and they says that these medicines has to be keep on burning at one corner of the sutika gara so that temperature inside the sutika gara will be maintained and baby will not have any problem immediately after delivery then further Ayurveda says that lighting of the lamp of Sarsha Pataila, a Sarsha Pataila lamp should be continuously lit. And again, this helps to maintain the illumination, this helps to maintain the um, brightness, and also one important is it helps to maintain the temperature. Now, compared to any other uh, present day available tungsten bulb, the Sarsha Pataila lamp, so that will not cause the air dry. Okay, it maintains the temperature without causing the dryness of the air. Now these bulbs and all they usually cause or room heaters they usually cause dryness of the air. Okay, dry air is not good for the baby. Okay, it's dangerous to the baby. But this type of method of maintaining the temperature and also as a light source uh, that helps to maintain the temperature without causing dryness of the air. Okay, another important concept to maintain the temperature expanded in Ayurveda is Sutika Gara construction by keeping a view of air flow. 
if you see sutika gara how it has to be constructed and this is a sunlight uh, they 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 very clear says door and window sides okay so so that the sunlight properly enter inside the sutika gara according to the movement of the day and night okay so it is uh, closely packed from the all sides but there will be windows for the entry of sunlight inside and these uh, explanations regarding sutika gara suggest very clearly that ayurveda taken a sufficient care to maintain the temperature of the uh, delivery room immediately after birth so that baby will not be get suffered because temperature inside the uterus is 5 degree higher than the outside temperature so we have to maintain the temperature at a higher degree okay so therefore this type of method is explained although more contemporary science understood the importance of temperature few decades back ayurveda 5000 years back itself told that yes temperature is a must and therefore sutika gara construction is very very crucial and it has to be constructed as per the rules now another is uh, <coughs> uh, maintain the airway okay so what contemporary science says about the airway is uh, clean the oral cavity clean the oral cavity you may be simply use the cotton which is very sterile and all you can use the mucus sucker or mechanical mucus sucker anything okay anyway you have to first clean the uh, oral cavity then clean the nasal cavity because uh, first you have clean the nasal cavity there may be a stimulation of the cough reflex or sneezing reflex etc and that may lead to consumption of the materials which is present in the oral cavity so always go for first oral cavity then go for nasal cavity cleaning then they says that you have to dry the baby then to maintain the temperature sorry to maintain the airway patency they says that stomach wash okay uh, because it has to be cleaned properly and positioning of the baby this is very good okay position of the baby very clear so when you keep the baby in the supine position uh, the neck position is very important it should not be too flexed or it should not be too extended both are going to cause the uh, closure of the trachea so it should be semi extended okay so ideal is the eyes of the baby should be facing the roof okay that is the ideal position for in the clinical practice now these are the explanations given by contemporary science for the purpose of maintaining the airway patency now ayurveda also says the same thing okay ayurveda explains mukha shodhana by index finger ayurveda says that mukha shodhana should be done immediately after birth while doing the mukha shodhana he says that you can do it by index finger that means wrap a cotton piece over the index finger and clean the oral cavity very clearly even today also practically this is the most um, um, uh, comfortable method instead of going for this um mucus sucker and all those things it may consume some time but uh, practically more easy method is cleaning by using the index finger and wrap it be, uh, index finger has to be wrapped with a gauze gauze piece or cotton piece gauze piece and clean it very properly because index finger go inside uh, till pharynx and all very cleanly it can uh, very neatly it can clean the uh, vulva etc okay so that's the one thing which is already explained in ayurveda second is cleaning the kanta pradesha cleaning of uh, mukha shodhana is explained and cleaning of kanta pradesha is also explained now again ayurveda says that immediately after birth baby has to be kept the flat surface flat surface not in the uneven surface if you keep the uneven surface the airway patency may not be maintained okay keep it always in the flat surface then for the cleaning of the ulba which is present in the stomach stomach wash is an explained in the contemporary science and ayurveda explains garbhodaka vamana by saindava and sarpi in the stomach wash also we use normal saline and uh, this saindava is nothing but the solid form of uh, same nacl okay so the liquid form of the nacl is a uh, sodium solution sodium chloride solution which we use in the contemporary science and i will say the sign the vent sarpi here sarpi is added sarpi helps to maintain the moisture and also also it prevent the injuries caused by this procedure okay then positioning of the baby is mentioned in the contemporary science and uh, position is also explained in our science uh, and uh, there is separate disease called as ulbaka okay and ulbaka disease so you have to remove the ulba ulba is nothing but amniotic fluid okay so if it is not uh, clean properly it may lead to the disease ulbaka that ulbaka disease has been in term, in relation to the um, meconium aspiration syndrome okay when the same amniotic fluid is mixed with the meconium it leads to ulbaka okay so anyway removing the ulba so again mukha shodhana procedures or methods to maintain the patency of the airway has been very well explained in ayurveda similar to that of a contemporary science now 
come to the actual part of resuscitation versus prana pratyagamana okay so we know that the word meaning of resuscitation and word meaning of prana pratyagamana we have already seen now the tabc next option is a breathing stimulation of the breathing now here comes the beautiful explanation stimulation of the breathing modern science explains a free flow oxygen for the purpose of stimulation of the breathing and different sensory stimulation like plifts on the sole and spinal rubbing etc then other methods are back and mask ventilation and then comes for positive pressure ventilation by using endotracheal tube etc okay now what i will explain for this is free flow oxygen can be given by just fanning the baby fanning the baby okay so because even the atmospheric air also contains about 21% oxygen so when you go for the fanning what actually happens is the old air or impure air will be driven away from that area and new air will be sucked in because of the negative pressure okay so when you are fanning there is a negative pressure and new air will be sucked in and this may fulfill the concept of free flow oxygen to some extent because the percentage of oxygen is 21% which is more than sufficient for the baby to get uh, to start the breathing okay now different sensory stimulation like plifts on the sole spinal rubbing has been explained in the modern science similarly different methods of stimulation of uh, through the sensory sensation has been also explained in ayurveda okay so shabda sparsha rupa rasaganda these are the five important sensations what we have okay ayurveda says that first you stimulate the important uh, first form of mahabhuta that is akasha and artha of the akasha mahabhuta is shabda so your body is more perceptive for this akasha mahabhuta which is initially formed so first you go for stimulation of the sensation by stimulating the shabda mahabhuta so therefore i the explains ashvana sangatanam karana yor mulam that is the first procedure okay that means ashvana sangatanam by doing ashvana sangatanam you are producing a sound okay so sound will be produced in the beginning because according to our science bhutana pravesha theory it is a sound quality which is acquired first by our body during the process of embryogenesis as akasha mahabhuta is the first form of mahabhuta so therefore ayurveda also explains one of the sensory method of stimulation similar to that of the contemporary sense that is ashvana sangatanam karana yoga mulam next sensation which is formed is shabda sparsha that is sparsha touch sensation therefore next ayurveda says mukhe parishekah okay here we talk about two types of sparshas one is uh, shita sparsha and ushna sparsha so next way of uh, stimulation of breathing by sensory stimulation is by mukhe parishekah by sprinkling water over the facial area so whatever sensory methods which are explained by the contemporary science for the stimulation of the respiration is also explained by ayurveda in these two references ashvana sangatanam karana yor mulo and mukhe parishekah okay now while fanning actually uh, ayurveda explains different types of leaves for the fanning it is not simply uh, uh, fanning now uh, harita explains harita explains different types of Uh, of uh, leaves for the purpose of fanning and he explains uh, the kadali patra for the fanning vata patra for the fanning that we will discuss in another class okay so this fanning actually helps in the modification of the air suppose if a dry air is there when it is fanned by using kadali patra which is having shita sparsha now now this air is undergoing humidification okay and this humidified air is good for the baby but a dry air is very bad for the baby any anyway, a um, contemporary science explains a bag and mask ventilation one of the very important method of uh, resuscitation okay handy method of uh, resuscitation similarly i was also explained say shurpa krishna kapalika shurpa krishna kapalika shurpa a shurpa is nothing but a winnowing basket like basket like structure okay a square like structure when it is spread it can be made into a square and they says that keep the head of the baby Uh, under this square portion of the winnowing basket and then keep on fanning krishna kapalika shurpa na ten abhinishtuya okay shurpa can be used or krishna kapalika can be also used so this is almost all similar to the concept of uh, uh, oxygen hood box in the oxygen hood box also it is it is helpful to give the high concentration of oxygen to the baby okay here also fixing the baby at a at a area and covering it with the shurpa like structures or producing a box like structure and then fanning it helps to maintain the temperature in the, uh, maintain the oxygen concentration in that particular area okay to some extent it's nothing but a oxygen hood box like procedure of course it's a crude procedure we agree it's a crude procedure oxygen hood box is a sophisticated procedure okay 
now talking about positive pressure ventilation okay positive pressure ventilation means uh, uh, endotracheal intubation you are doing and then you are pushing the bag and mask ventilation uh, through inside positive pressure ventilation this type of explanation is not uh, not present in ayurveda okay so this explanation we didn't find ayurveda limit its resuscitation up to krishna kapalika shurpa or oxygen hood box like condition okay forcefully pushing the air inside the trachea or inside the mouth just like as we do in case of bag and mask ventilation or endotracheal intubation has been not mentioned in our science okay it is not mentioned there may be different reason for that maybe they are not knowing how to separate oxygen from the air okay so nowadays we separate the oxygen from the air and we will store it in the uh, cylinders although they know how to modify the air by using different leaves but they may not be knowing about how to collect the air in a cylinder so therefore the process of resuscitation is limited up to oxygen hood box method in ayurveda okay the bag and mask like procedures are so far not made, uh, mentioned in ayurveda now another is tabc the method of maintaining the circulation okay circulation that means you have the airway patency is there and you also given the oxygen inside breathing is also talking, uh, taking place and if this particular oxygen which is taken through the breathing if it is not circulating in the blood then again the baby will not revive sinusitis will not develop, uh, disappear okay uh, heart rate will not increase so what is circulation is important that means heart rate has to function well okay then only this oxygen which is taken inside can be very well utilized okay so modern science explains Uh, some of the methods of uh, increase in circulation we know that starts from the less handling of the baby this is the first one okay they always say that you handle the baby very less okay over handling is always dangerous then maintain the temperature that also helps to increase the circulation yes provide the feeding that also helps to increase the circulation provide the aseptic environment yes that also helps to increase the circulation okay then in emergency to maintain the cardiac status yes they have got certain methods like chest compression adrenaline etc okay so these are the different methods explained in contemporary sense for maintain the circulation now what i would say is to maintain the temperature what i would say is bala taila abhyanga okay uh, oil is acting as a insulator and it helps to increase the uh, uh, maintain the temperature and the bala taila is also vata okay so the exertion caused by the delivery during the time of the delivery that will be also corrected by one time then another method they say pichudarana pichudarana has to be done over the pichu area again we know that the maximum temperature loss will be taking place from the scalp area okay so you keep a pichu which is immersed in the oil in the pichu area that is in the scalp area that helps to prevent the heat loss from the scalp area then provide the feeding in the modern sense they say provide the feeding and all so ayurveda also says that immediately after birth you have to go for feeding and again mother and child should be isolated and they should be kept in the suthika gara and they, it should be baby and child uh, baby and mother should not be separated baby and mother as a unit should be separated from other visitors and other members and they have to it gives a very good conducive condition for sanyapan okay then to provide the aseptic measure ayurveda explains a beautiful concept for raksha karma because once the infection is there the circulation is not well maintained okay so there will be so many problems so for that you go for raksha karma we have a different class on raksha karma raksha karma is a big topic raksha karma deals with all such methods which helps to maintain the <coughs> temperature which <coughs> helps to maintain the aseptic measures inside the suthika gara or inside wherever the baby has been kept okay now other methods of maintaining the circulation which is explained in ayurveda is like swarna prashana then namakarana samskara shashti puja karana vedana samskara chuda karma because all these methods helps to increase the immunity okay body immunity so immunity is very important to prevent the infections so, to maintain the aseptic condition and to maintain the disease free condition of the neonate these procedures are done so this is how ayurveda talk about maintenance of circulation and maintenance of infectious free state okay after the resuscitation now steps in the resuscitation when you see uh, the sequence of steps followed in the resuscitation of the newborn uh, that is the tabc of resuscitation first step after cleaning the oral cavity first step after cleaning the oral cavity and the nose is the sensory stimulation that we have discussed 
then touching of the baby rubbing of the baby sudden exposure to the cold atmosphere stimulation of the st stimulation by stroking the soles more vigorous sympathetic stimulation by rubbing the spinal area uh, most of the babies will revive by this methods okay so minor degree of asphyxia will be corrected just by simple sensory stimulation method this we have to know only few babies will require back and mask ventilation and very very few babies will require the endotracheal intubation okay maximum babies will start crying at the time of the birth once you cut the umbilicus and when the baby suddenly get exposed to external cold environment uh, because of that sensory stimulation itself the baby will start crying or again rubbing when you are rubbing and holding the baby again it's a touch sensation okay by that stimulation also baby start cries and if the baby is not crying then you go for sensory stimulation definitely baby will cry if that is also not effective then only you go for back and mask ventilation at such percentage of percentage of such baby is very less percentage of such baby is only less than 10 percent and babies which is requiring the endotracheal intubation is still less okay very few of them require the endotracheal intubation now continuing with this steps explained in ayurveda for the purpose of resuscitation <coughs> so this uh, thus ayurveda explains a methodological explanation of resuscitation in ayurveda so these different steps in ayurveda resuscitation which is used for the stimulation of breathing okay so this part we will continue in the next class uh, thank you very much and uh, please subscribe the channel and also give your valuable comments in the next class we will continue with the different types of steps different steps taken in ayurveda resuscitation for the stimulation of breathing thank you very much